there, Scorpio. How are you? We're going to get started on your love reading for the month of February, Scorpio. It's always a pleasure and an honor to be here with you doing your reading, Scorpio. I love you guys. All right, let's begin by choosing a tarot deck. We're going to use this one right here, fairy and magical creatures. This is what it looks like. Something that's standing out to me is this woman's hairy legs. <laughs> There's hairy, somebody has hairy legs. Maybe somebody's just naturally hairy. Maybe somebody likes the hair on their body. That's fine, that's cool, definitely. There's a natural, okay, let's just say there's a natural beauty for sure. Fairies and magical creatures. All right. I'm hearing not, uh, What is it? Um, what's the word? Not conforming, not conforming to to certain standards of beauty. All right, what do we have here, guys? Yikes. Okay, <laughs> okay. Scorpio, this is what's going on right now in your love life, in your relationships. For the majority of you, this is going to resonate with you in regards to your love life, the majority of it, but a lot of your general life, will we will see that here. This is a love reading. And for those of you that are single, don't worry, this reading is for you too, okay? It's just going to connect with you, resonate with you in regards to any other relationship you have in your life. It doesn't have to be romantic in nature. It could be about a family member, a, a friend, a co-worker, a friend of a friend. Uh, you know, you get the point here. All right, so we have the Nine of Swords. Some of you could be experiencing sleep paralysis or experiencing some like supernatural activity, perhaps in your home, perhaps at night, okay, a lot. Maybe you are experiencing anxiety before you go to bed. There's heaviness in your chest, a lot of stress. Uh, for others of you, there is an actual living person that uh, is causing you this anxiety that uh, is, uh, well, affecting you psychologically a lot, perhaps because of, you know, whatever it is that they're doing, okay? The nine of swords, you see that? That is um, a, a hag, a hag, that's a hag. For many of you, there is a hag in your life. There's a hag in your life. <sighs> a hag. When I think about a hag, I think about, well, I, first I think about a woman, but for many of you, it's not a woman, okay? But uh, it is, uh, it is someone's dark feminine, okay? And we all have a feminine and a masculine energy within us. So this is a dark feminine energy here that um is cruel is mean is oppressive it is uh in very toxic and that is psychologically damaging in some way this nine of swords the nine of swords as well is nightmares for many of you, this certainly could be trauma. Maybe this is something that's not happening at this present moment, but that did happen and it's uh, like a reoccurring nightmare, we could say, in your life. And with the temperance, yes, I just saw this. The temperance is right next to it, guys. So this is about healing. I remember doing a, I can't, I, I, it was a report. I'm not doing those anymore, guys, but I was uh, for a long time, many years, uh, doing these life purpose reports. Hold on, guys, my phone. You see, I have a knock on the door. Hey there, Scorpio, I'm back. I am so sorry about that. I had to, uh, I had to get that because my AC hasn't been working and, well, I knew that that was when my phone started to go off. 
I knew it was maintenance letting me know that uh, they would be here soon. And sure enough, uh, there was a knock at the door. It was the AC person. And uh, good news, my AC is up and running. Yay! Anyways, let's get back into your reading. And I'm actually glad that that happened, guys, because while I was waiting for uh, the AC guy to be done, I grabbed the this book which is the where's oh the box is over there well, anyways this is the deck this is the the book that came with the deck that i'm using which is the fairy and magical creatures and i looked up the nine of swords <clears throat> the hack and let me read to you what this says it says some fairies are nocturnal demons that visit the sleeping to torment them, sitting on their chest and obstructing their breathing. Nightmares. They come from fears, from guilt, from senseless shame, as well as the trauma of extended mental suffering. Sometimes the nightmares don't disappear in the morning. They remain. This is the Nine of Swords. It brings anxiety and depression and can point to psychological illness or emotional stress, as well as terrors and paranoia that come from the suspicion that something is hidden, that a piece of the story is missing. Let's try to listen to the unpleasant voice of the fairy. She stabs the mind like a needle. He challenges us. Free yourself of me through truth. So that's this nine of swords. It's a night hag. So for many of you, this nine of swords is representative of long mental suffering guys you've been suffering for a long time and uh you might not be in this place anymore but it uh, psychologically impacted you so deeply that for many of you you are actually traumatized you might even be experiencing symptoms of ptsd there's heavy stress at the present moment you might even feel heaviness in your chest trouble breathing the other card that came out is the temperance and i found it interesting i read this card as well this is the sandman so you see how both of these cards have a connection to the to they have a connection this one because of the night hack night time it happens when you're asleep right and the temperance this is actually the sandman you guys know the sandman let's read that this is the temperance. Let's read the temperance now. Here it is. Sleep opens access to another view of our reality. Until this happens, there is an elf of semi-divine creature there is an elf or semi-divine creature who travels non-stop through the night sky sliding into home through windows left ajar and small cracks and throwing magic sand into people's eyes the sand is either gray for nightmares or gold for dreams or perhaps if we reimagine the classic myth we can say that one type of sand is for tricky dreams and one for prophetic dreams the sandman and his donkey work unseen and return peace to the world in sleep we are protected we offer ourselves we offer ourselves undefended we embrace those next to us human and animal we go to the wonderland of our intuition and fears even temperance comes to protect us to return our equilibrium after turmoil like a good dream a restorative figure we should give ourselves to in the arcana of fairies the sandman is a supportive guide through nightmares and visions resting and waking and has been there since infancy so do you see how these two cards connect guys so so i'm glad you know i'm glad for that interruption nothing is an accident if it wasn't for that interruption there guys i wouldn't have picked up the book and looked into it and seen this connection there so this is this temperance guys is many things it's representative of healing of course from past trauma, healing from current suffering, stress. 
as well as symbolic of a person, an actual person that um, is going to guide you, help you through this. The temperance, the Sandman. The Sandman is like the, uh, he rules dreams, right? So it's reminding me of like a psychotherapist in a way, you know, that this for many of you uh, could be telling you to, to get help, okay? To get therapy, for sure. Therapy, you need therapy for this. Look at that. My goodness, many of you, you're reliving trauma at this time. You really are. You might be having nightmares. It's difficult for you to sleep at night. Again, the heaviness in the, uh, in the chest. You are fearful, frightful. There's a sense of insecurity of not feeling safe, feeling like something's watching, looming over you. And this temperance is saying that you are currently healing of that as well, that there is a person, okay, around you that is going to or is helping you through this at the present moment, okay? Or will be very soon helping you get through this nightmare. Navigate, um, it's going to help you navigate through your subconscious fears. Do you see that? And is going to restore peace and harmony, equilibrium back into your life. So this is a beautiful message, guys. Before we got interrupted, I was going to share with you guys, um, <clears throat> some more information about this hag. I remember doing a life purpose report and uh, I love those reports, guys. Uh, I don't do them anymore because they're time consuming. And at the time I was just incredibly overwhelmed with work. So I had to stop doing reports so I can focus on the on my channel and, and tarot readings. But it's something that I want to start doing again and if I do, I will have to either, you know, choose, I, I will have to let go of, of tarot. I can still do the, the public readings, but I would have to let go of tarot and I would focus on, it's like either or. And well, I do plan on, I, I do plan on one day, hopefully, um, being able to do that. And uh, there was a particular person that uh, I I did a, re a life purpose report for. And in this reading, guys, I go into a shamanic journey. I tap into Akashic Records and I gather a bunch of information. What I'm going to get, I never know. I go and it's like I tap into your energy and then I extract. You could think about it like a box, like a puzzle box, and I put all the pieces together and I get so, I mean, it's just, I can't tell you everything that I get. It's just different for every person. And I remember seeing a hag in that, uh, when I tapped into this person, I, I saw the hag. So I did a lot of research on, on hags and, uh, sleep paralysis and, uh, something that, um, and well, and well, I'm being reminded of that. Something that I learned about uh, hags is that uh, they don't have a motherly instinct. So for many of you, this could be trauma that you experience uh, from uh, from uh, um, from a, mo a mother, uh, um, a mother figure who was um, not very loving, narcissistic. We could say for sure who rejected you. Uh, the, the hag is all about rejecting the, that feminine within, that loving nature, and it tends to reject its children. So for many of you, uh, that here is of significance, maybe not perhaps in your life, but maybe that, uh, that hag um, symbolism there is significant in somebody else's life that you, that you know that is connected to this. <sighs> What else did I get about this hag? They're incredibly territorial is something that I remember. Um, when I saw this hag, guys, uh, it's very disturbing what it is that I saw. And I'm sharing it here with you guys because it's significant, it's important. Okay, if I'm being reminded and I'm being called to share this with you. When I tapped into this person, what I saw was a hag, in very, very, very skinny. Uh, thin, almost bones, and they were cursing. Okay, so this is a very hateful individual. They, it's, it's incredibly, 
it's it's incredibly hateful and very uh, controlling territorial. And uh, I actually saw it walking around that person's house and uh, it was cursing as it walked. And every now and then it would stop and squat down and pee. It would pee. So it was, it's a very, uh, it's, what is it like? It's, that's where I got the territorial from. It, it has an animal nature to it. Uh, yeah. And, um, well, that's significant here with you guys. This is uh, about uh, claiming, claiming territory. What does that mean exactly? It's, it's just uh, about uh, control uh, and authority. And I'm hearing and wanting to stay in one place, wanting to stay in, in one place. I'm trying to think what else. I uh, can't think of everything. And um, another thing that I remember reading about uh, these hags is that um, a hag is actually very powerful. Is uh, when it comes to witch hierarchy. Okay, the hag is the most powerful. Uh, so this is a person that uh, is seems to they appear to be weak, but they're incredibly strong. So what does that mean? It means that this is a person whose looks could be deceiving. This is a person that you might look at and say, oh, they don't, you know, I, you you perceive them as somebody who is not able to cause perhaps a lot of damage. Right. Or, you, you know, but on the contrary, they are they are not as they appear they're incredibly strong so that's one thing about hags okay so appearance appearances are deceiving they look like they can't break uh, uh or won't or can't okay break a plate but again they're evil <laughs> they can cause a lot of damage another thing is that um there's uh i read uh about the lore mythology of of hags and uh what they do is that they steal, they, they steal children, okay? That's a thing that they do. And they like girls, okay? They, they hate boys, okay? So this could be, uh, that could be of significance, hags. They hate the boys, they hate them, they hate them, they eat them, okay? But every once in a while, they might take one in and they, 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 it, they become like a warlock or something like that. Uh, very once in a while, there isn't too many of those, um, but they like uh, little girls, okay? They like to take little girls under their wing and turn them into wicked witches like themselves. And the trick here is that uh, these hags, they uh, infiltrate, they invade your home, and basically they start influencing the children, okay? And uh, the... The trick is to remove the hag before the child is, I believe, 15. Because uh, if the hag has control over the child past the age of 15, then the child is lost forever. That is, you know, so, uh, uh, some lore here, some mythology connected to this hag. So that could be of significance, guys. Um, that could be of significance. The hag needs to be removed, separated from the hag before the age of 15. If the child is to recover, is the, if the child is to uh, be saved, we could say. Because after that, uh, it just means the child has been influenced uh, past the certain point where they cannot be recovered the nine of swords and then the temperance uh what else uh, this is an elf right here isn't it and elves are incredibly helpful so for many of you again this elf is representative of a positive positive energy around you that that will be helping you there's a lot of mother issues here um cruelty suffering inflicting pain and suffering all right, so 
so that's what we have so that's what's going on right now guys interesting that's what's going on at the present moment so again two things you are either reliving your trauma reliving trauma or you are in the middle of this at this present moment and it is already affecting 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 you psychologically in a tremendous way but listen no matter where it is that you are something it is that you know that you should know is that this is something okay that you are going to heal from peace will be restored in your life in whoever's life whoever's life has been affected that's right now we have the six of cups what i'm doing all this talking about children and you know what's interesting aries uh, i did aries the uh, right before you scorpio and they have the, that same energy maybe some of you need to listen to the aries reading because there was a bully there we might even see it we might even see it's the five of swords and uh, there we see a, a grown person that looks to be bullying two children so listen up okay some of you need to um listen to the aries reading the six of cups is representative of children and there we have a kid and we see a panther um i'm actually not seeing the panther as something dangerous okay i'm seeing the panther as a matter of fact it's a strong feminine energy and um it is very it's incredibly protective and per it's very perceptive so for many of you, I'm seeing this panther as representative as your intuition that was caged. Uh, that could certainly be you, my dear Scorpio, that um, was uh, restricted in some way. Caged, okay? Kept away. Restricted. It's like, yeah, you were restricted. Somebody here, okay, was restricted. you see that there you see it's like they can't get close to each other the six of cups is children it, the six of cups as well as memories it could be representative of dreams pay attention to your dreams at this time uh, something that is really going to help you guys if you want to do this uh, go do deep meditations highly recommend steve noble's youtube channel he has a lot of great meditations on his channel that will help you through the healing process, shamanic journeys, you could just look up any kind of meditation music, instrumental, and you know, just sit there Indian style on the floor. Maybe you could lay down, sit down on the couch, and maybe, you know, have some earphones on. If you don't, just make sure you're in a quiet place where you're not gonna get disturbed. And just sit in your feelings and breathe and breathe. And before you know it, you're gonna start daydreaming, okay? You could look at that, okay, as um like a light form of shamanic journey, okay? And the more you do it, the better you get at it. And that, okay, is really going to help you, for many of you, retrieve certain memories, remember certain things, because I feel like uh, uh, um, your perception, okay, is, is very important, specifically remembering your own perception, how it is that you saw things, how you remember things, okay? And paying attention, I'm hearing to that feeling that's connected to that memory. Um, something that you should know when trying to remember things, especially if it's like old stuff, or it doesn't matter, you know, if you're remembering an experience, uh, a lot of times when it's traumatic, there's things that the mind blocks, uh, but there is something called sensory memory where you, it's, it's not like a memory, you know, it's like a memory is kind of like a little video, right? Well, the sensory memory is, uh, you, you have a memory of what happened, but is through your senses, but it's, it, it is, uh, the same knowing is the same. So you feel it. You, you, you feel you might feel the pain of it but you know you resonate with that feeling and although you don't have a a vision okay visuals to go with it you know exactly what it what that is it is a recorded it is a memory it's a sensory memory pay attention to those things okay that is important six of cups yeah memories chill memories children memories and children guys this could be about uh your childhood 
we have the king of swords the king of swords and then we have the page of cups uh, look what we have here. We have the king of swords. So this is, I'm hearing, don't overanalyze this. There could be a tendency to overanalyze, to try to make sense of certain things. And the problem with that, guys, is that, um, well, when you are oh, looking at things in an analytical way, you, 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 can, you can miss a, a lot of things because what you're seeing, what you're analyzing is not making any sense. Okay, that's why the sensory uh, memories are very important because, uh, well, you might go, for example, like right now I'm hearing, you might go through something, especially as a child or at a moment in time where, you know, you don't know really what's happening and you have to depend on other people to tell you what is happening. So you see, it's very important that you remember uh, things uh, through your own perception, okay? Because I'm kind of getting that here that... Uh, it's like somebody um, told you this is what's happening. And well, that could appear a certain way. That's when you have to use your intuition, for example, especially when we have incredibly manipulative people like narcissists, for example, that, uh, well, they could be the nicest people, you think. And here we have in, uh, the King of Swords who, well, it's over, overly analytical. They tend to be, right? And here we have a bunch of ghosts. So it looks like they're being haunted. But it's almost like a non-believer. I'm kind of getting that because the King of Swords could be a non-believer. You know, he's the one that tries to rationalize everything. So where is this knowing coming from? It's coming from the plumbing, <laughs> you know, or, you know, was this or was that? But it's never, it's never, um, I'm here, it's never the ghost, right? It's never that thing. So you see, this man is being haunted by, by ghosts. And they seem frightened. They are aware, right, that there is something there. But it, it feels like they don't want to look. They don't want to recognize it. And then here we have the page of cups and we have a young, a young child there, a page who, um, seems to be having fun. This strikes me as a kid who others might label as a troublemaker because they are, you know, super energetic and, uh, restless and, um, uh, well, they need to burn out that energy some way, somehow. So they're always getting into, could, you know, have a tendency of, you know, getting into trouble. Look at their knee. So, you know, the pants are ripped. That's of significance. That's of importance, guys. We have a child here that is full of life. That I'm hearing has been labeled uh, as a troublemaker. And that, okay, whatever came from that has um, in some way or another experiences this child has, has uh, really affected, um, even like sterilized them in, in some way with the King of Swords that I see here. You see, it's like this is them when they were little, but this could still be a child, you know, the inner child. And then that's like them all grown up or older. You see, mm. they're, they don't seem so alive. They seem closer to death, it seems like, right? Because all the ghosts are there. So that's what's going on. Interesting. Let's put this back in. What are they thinking? What are they feeling? Who's they? Well, depend, well, this is a love and relationship reading, guys. For most of you, this is going to resonate in connection to a love relationship, okay, in some way or another. Or if you're single, hey, this reading is for you. Or whether you're single or not, okay, it doesn't have to, uh, it's not just a love reading, it's uh, a relationship reading. So it's going to be connecting with any other relationship you have in your life, family, okay, brother, sister, uh, a daughter, a son, I'm hearing a cousin, a neighbor, a co-worker, a friend, a friend of a friend, you get the point. So let's see, what are they thinking? What are they thinking? What are they thinking and what are they feeling? So we could be tapping into the hag, for example. We could be tapping into the child. 
that could be you or we or if it's not you that child is not you okay we could be tapping into you not no this won't be you this would be the hag or the child or anybody else involved here what are they thinking what are they thinking goodness this is uh okay let's take these i thought it was more but it's actually just three Right at the bottom of the deck, we have the Ten of Swords. Notice that just a little while ago, we saw the Nine of Swords. And here we have a little person that is sad. They've been through... <sighs> they've been through the worst, it seems. They went through... They've been through the worst. The, wor the worst has already happened. So... This is what they're thinking for many of you. This is something that has already occurred, meaning the worst part is already over. And at this moment, moment many of you find yourselves uh, at a point of recovery. Somebody does. Uh, let's see. We have the four of wands. And here we have a couple there. And there's a bunch of little elves around. There's musical notes. The four of wands is about stabilizing. It's about uh, taking, it's about progress. So there's progress here, guys, uh, that is happening. Somebody is feeling a lot more supportive. I'm getting that for many of you. This is the, the one that I've been seeing as this is the, the child. And for many of you, again, that child is actually you or somebody it is, is that you know. Again, could be an actual child or this is an adult now who experienced this as a child and for whatever reason, I mean, it could be something, you know, that is significant now. Um, oh my goodness. This is going through hell, it seems like, right? You got, you, it feels like a tornado just came through. And what happens after a tornado? It leaves devastation behind. So you see how it goes with what I'm telling you? Like we could see this 10 of swords as the aftermath of uh, what uh, has just uh, occurred, which here we could see like a tornado that came by and uh, well, left behind, left this behind, sadness. misfortune and it's like well what now what to do now well what to do now you start the recovery process don't you you start rebuilding so this is all about rebuilding guys for many of you you yourself my dear scorpio somebody is that you know has uh, gone through uh, uh, something uh, very uh, difficult okay uh, that certainly could have been traumatizing, that has deeply uh, affected them psychologically, uh, emotionally, may have even uh, affected, you know, their, their surroundings in, in some way. But for sure, this is something that you will be able to see, okay? You will be able to see this damage the way it is that uh, it this has affected them. You will be able to see it in some way. They might look sad. They might, you know, show some anxiety, because this person, visibly, you could tell that they uh, they have been through something. So it's certainly there is somebody has been through something here, guys. The Four of Wands, though, says that progress has been made. Progress can be, be made. Things ha are stabilizing. And here, there's a bunch of little elves. And when I think about little elves, I think about very supportive. Uh, they're, they're supportive, aren't they? They help you. And there is the couple. There is a couple there. So for many of you, there might be a couple that uh, there's a uh, there's a, a union, a relationship here that is um, creating progress in this situation. It is uh, causing things to improve. I'm hearing in your life, in a situation, in somebody else's life, we have the devil. Then we have the four of swords and we have somebody sleeping interesting the four of swords is about recovering and healing but it's like it's still there it's it's psychological trauma is what it is that we have here guys psychological trauma what are they thinking this is this is the child okay this is, this is that person. 
there that was underneath that hag. And for many of you, this affected more than one person. It affected at least two people because we, here we have two people. It's, uh, it's it, it, this is uh, memories. Again, just the, uh, the bad experience that is haunting you that uh, seems like although it's over, it's still tormenting you. It is. It's still tormenting. It's, it's hard, right, to recover. It's still affecting you. It's still affecting someone. Something it is that you should know, though, at this very moment is that you can rest. We saw that from the very beginning with the temperance. You can rest now. You can how are you going to do that? It's very important, okay, when you go through stuff like this, that you get enough sleep. I'm serious. Sleep is very important. You have to uh, take care of your mental health. So uh, breathing exercises are really going to help you out, guys. Uh, imagine two lungs in your stomach right now. There's two lungs. Now breathe in. And as you breathe in, imagine those lungs in your stomach inflating and expanding okay and your stomach is going to be expanding and inhale as much air as you can and and visualize those lungs just as wide and as full as possible and direct that uh the air to your stomach not towards your chest or your lungs you're ex you're drawing that that breath to your stomach and breathe out do that 10 times and uh, then just sit there breathing for a while that is really going to if you have uh, a, a lot of anxiety this for sure okay well it seems uh, like it could uh, cause uh, stress anxiety sleeplessness you can start uh, having trouble uh, sleeping uh, again a whole lot of stress but again the four of swords says that you can sleep okay you can sleep in peace you can meaning that there's this is over this nightmare is over this nightmare is over guys I'm also seeing somebody that um, finally, okay, uh, is able to recover because they have been removed from a bad situation, right? Like there's the devastation. But I'm hearing there is a union. There is a partnership here of some sort. Help, support. That um, is helping, I'm hearing someone progress in life, recover which is the cause for celebration. The devil I'm hearing is representative of, I'm hearing that place that they were once at, that they felt helpless and hopeless. And have you ever been in a situation, guys, where you feel hopeless and helpless? I have. And uh, it is an incredibly debilitating feeling. Uh, it's, it's feeling trapped. And this is kind of what it feels like here. It's somebody for some time felt trapped in a bad situation. But now I'm hearing they're, they're not there. They're not trapped there. Maybe psychologically it, they're still there in the way that uh, they have been psychologically, emotionally impacted by this. That's how they're still trapped there. But they're not, I'm hearing, physically there anymore. And, well, that's a good thing in the way that they're no longer there, which says that uh, the stage, in a way, is uh, the environment that this person is in now. They can finally begin to heal. You see? This is a person that's at peace. They're in bed. There's some birds coming in, chirping. Nice. They're no longer there. They have been removed from that bad place. So this is what they're thinking. They're thinking, I can sleep better at night. I feel a lot more comfortable. I'm not, you know, under constant stress anymore. Although I'm 
I'm still experiencing some stress, but not because, you know, I'm there. I'm not no longer there. It's just the aftermath, right? It's just the aftermath, the psychological, emotional damage that I'm dealing with. Because the worst is over. The worst is over. And I'm finally four of swords in a place where, uh, well, I'm not uh, in danger. I don't feel trapped anymore. I am at ease now. I'm a lot more comfortable. Beautiful, guys. <sighs> That's what they're thinking. Who is this? Who is this, guys? This could have been an abusive relationship as well. That's what they're thinking. <sighs> it's a sigh of relief. It's a sigh of relief. I can't, whoa, like, I can't, like, did I just go through that? It is the King of Cups. And then we have the Hermit. For many of you, this is the male Scorpio. You see how the Hermit is shining a light on the King of Cups? For many of you, this is the, the, the male Scorpio, the masculine energy. We have the Three of Swords. What is next, guys? We could say, what is next? What is next is the Hermit. What's the Hermit? The Hermit is a journey. I would say, um, and here we have a bunch of tombstones. It seems like some they're, they're at a cemetery, it looks like, right? And the King of Cups. All right, so the Hermit is shining a light on the King of Cups. Do you see that? Like, what are they showing? There's something, right, Spirit is bringing attention to here. I see a journey of recovery. I do see, I see a journey of recovery here. The Hermit is a journey. It's a journey. Might be in a, a com uncomfortable a bit, right? Because it looks cold, right? First of all, and they're not properly clothed for cold weather. And it's a cemetery and it's at night. So uh, maybe uncomfortable for sure. The hermit is shining a light on uh, things, uh, on in shining a light into the darkness, which we could see uh, representative of uh, just becoming aware. Becoming aware. The hermit is a spiritual journey. It is a certain path that it is that you take. And with the King of Cups being here, I feel like this is a journey of emotional healing. I feel like this experience is something that uh, obviously somebody will have to heal from. And it's it's like coming later. You know when, uh, if you have ever experienced trauma, or maybe you haven't, but you can understand this, like you go through something and you don't realize what how that experience has affected you until, until later. That's kind of like what this feels like. I see somebody, uh, recovering i see them recovering experiencing already relief but i do see whoever this is later on okay that later on depending on this timeline that later on might be now for many of you if you've already experienced this a while back you might be in this stage now but for others is something you will experience later on in the future or you will revisit this Maybe, you know, the hermit is uh, an older individual. Maybe, you know, for many of you, if this is a child, this is something that they will uh, revisit later on in, in their life. Uh, it, what it's important right now, I'm hearing, is just to offer a safe uh, and peaceful place for them to be in, to be able to, I'm hearing, just wind down, okay, and be able to just be at peace. That's what is most important, providing this per person with the support it is that they need. Maybe there's some musical talent here because, look, there's like musical notes there and there is a, a couple there. And again, there's little elves all around that are very supportive. Think about a table. It has four legs, so it's very stable. OK, this is about just stabilizing the environment, which I feel like it's there. I feel like that's the most important thing right now. And again, peace. And uh, for sure, you know, the next thing is, um, I'm hearing talking about this. 
three of swords. Here we have a tornado and we have a fairy. There, that's the tornado that swept through here and caused all this destruction. This is something painful, guys. This is suffering that, okay, most important you should know is going to be healed. Another thing you should know is it will be revisited. It will be revisited and uh, whatever was hidden in the dark. I'm hearing, don't worry about what I'm hearing about, uh, especially if this is somebody else, don't worry about them understanding, you know, right now. They will understand in the truth, okay? The truth will be revealed. Anything that is kept in the shadows, I'm hearing light will be shed on it. Especially with children, guys, because a child is able, you know, a child is not real, you know, They might not have the proper words, the mental, emotional maturity capability to explain exactly what happened. But as they grow older and become adults and fully develop, they can look back and they will see, I'm hearing this journey that they've been on differently. Or they will be a better able and suited, I'm hearing, to deal with this. It's what I'm getting for many of you. This is uh, something that uh, it's like a, a road to recovery and pain. And I'm hearing, and what caused that pain and the chaos? Again, you know, you go through go through things in life, and you don't. Sometimes you don't uh, realize how big of an impact it had on you, or how devastating that experience was because of the shock, you know. And it's not until later, as time goes by, that you realize, oh my God, like that was terrible. That was terrible. So that's kind of like something that I see here, guys. This hangman as well says that there is, uh, look, there's, it looks like somebody is shedding skin. Somebody will shed this experience, okay? They will shed this experience. Look at that. We have the hair font. This reminds me of, is it Mother Willow from Pocahontas? This is the hair font, guys. <sighs> The hair font. Okay, let's go back to the tongue, man. So this experience will be shed. And there is a higher perspective, okay? There is a higher perspective here that is going to be gained. But what happens with the hangman is, you know, it takes a little while for the big picture to come around. I'm hearing be patient with yourself, be patient with others. Do you know that this is uh, a situation um, that uh, is going to be unraveling and uh, that will be slowly be illuminated in, 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 in time, you know? What's important right now is just to rest. <sighs> to enjoy the peace I'm hearing that you feel, to find comfort, to sigh in relief, absolutely. Now this hair font, guys, this is a, I'm hearing matriarch, this is a, a very healing, first of all, this is a very healing energy, you see nature, it's a motherly energy, you see how there's children all around, so this is a person that is very good with children. So very good with children, has the power of transformation, uh, meaning that this individual here, whoever this hair font is, has the power to influence and impact the lives of others in a very positive way. This is a mentor. This is a teacher. This is a guide. The butterflies there are representative of uh, their ability to transform. I'm hearing minds. And 
And it's it's an incredibly loving, nurturing energy. So I do feel like this is needed, guys. Okay. This is needed. This energy is needed. And again, other than that, I'm seeing somebody that is incredibly grounded and rooted. Uh, this to me strikes me as the type of person that no matter where they are in the room or when they enter a room, it, 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 no matter what the energy is in it, they just uh, stabilize everything as soon as they enter the room. That They have a calming presence, don't they? So this is important, okay? This energy is important, guys. There's a steamroller here. Do you guys know what that is? That is the person, uh, the steamroller is somebody that uh, pressures, is somebody that pressures. And I'm saying steamroller because here we have this 10 of wands and it's reminding me of a steamroller. You see, it's just like uh, ravishing through. It's just ravishing through. And this one right here is like, stop. And this thing is not stopping. So there's a, a very, there was, is a very pushy energy here. It reminds me of a steamroller. Steamrollers are just people who are in, incredibly overbearing and that get their way through pressure. So this would be like the, um, Think about uh, a customer that wants something. Well, well, I want this because of that. And they're incredibly pushy. And then we talk to the Mandarin, it's like, oh my God, they don't stop. No, I want this, I'll, you know, that's, and they just kind of force you into something. Uh, and they can be intimidating, very pushy again, mean, selfish, of course. They lack empathy, the 10 of wands. And uh, another thing that I'm seeing is like somebody went overboard here. There were just too much, right? They didn't stop when they were supposed to. Somebody didn't know when to stop. Okay. This is just like more insight into what we have here. Um, and well, this other part that we saw here is what they're thinking. Interesting. And what are they thinking? What are they feeling? Which is just the experience that they're having now. I feel like this is future energy as well as, uh, which again, what is it saying? It's saying somebody went too far here. There's a steamroller. This um, situation need, requires patience and do know that uh, there's a negative experience here with the three of swords. And the hangman said that, um, this is a situation, right? Experience that uh, somebody will shed. You see that? The King of Cups is representative of emotional stability and healing, as well as emotional intelligence. I'm hearing we go back to that sensory memory. You might not be able to fully understand right now. Okay, makes sense. But I'm hearing listen to your heart and listen to your feelings. And uh, well, your feelings don't lie, okay? Your, especially when you go through abuse and you, the abuser always has uh, the tendency of uh, manipulating your reality, telling you what it is that is going on, okay? Telling you how it is that you should feel. And well, that's what we have here, guys. Somebody, you know, going through that process with this hermit and uh, seeing for themselves what truly is happening here. Now, you know, um, for many of you, I'm getting that this could be in regards to parents, you know, where one parent is mean and abusive and, you know, your children are very loyal. They don't, a lot of times they don't know. Um, and, uh, well, for some of you that is of significance. Okay. Do know that, uh, whatever happened here, okay. will uh, come to, to light and somebody will understand. I'm hearing what happened here. So don't worry about that. If there's lies or things like that, all in due time, okay? We already talked about what's important. Transform and heal. Transform and heal. Tran transform and heal. All right, so what can you, ex what is hidden? Well, I think we saw a lot of what's hidden already. But let's see, what is hidden, my dear Scorpio? What is hidden? This could be something that you're not seeing, something you don't know. Maybe you do, and this is just serving as some sort of confirmation. Let's see. 
There is a leprechaun, guys. I'm seeing the leprechaun. Leprechaun. What is the leprechaun? That could be a greedy person. Greedy. Chasty. Just a misser. Um, opportunistic. We have the hermit again. This is what's hidden. Here we have that. Look, 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 look. This one also looks scared, right? It's like they're scared at what it is that is they're seeing. Like, oh, what is that? So, and then here we have, it's a cemetery. So I'm seeing this as like skeletons in the closet, uh, as well as uh, these uh, graves there are symbolic of things that are uh, seem to have been buried at the moment I'm hearing, but that later on will come to light. The truth will come to light. The truth will come to light. The truth will come to light. And there's a little person here with a sword. The truth will come to light is what it is that you should know. And here we have two palm trees. And you see how there's two people at the very top and one of them is going like that. So it's almost, I'm seeing it as somebody like growing. Now, again, this doesn't have to be about a child. It could be about your childhood, okay? It could be about a child right now. Um, or it could it could still be an adult, right? And this is just this palm tree here. Uh, the the length here is just symbolic of time, you know, passing. You see that this is what oh this is the two of wands. I'm seeing the two of wands as foresight. This is what's hidden. This is what you should know. What you should know, it's giving you foresight into the future. Two of wands. This is what you can expect in the future. You can expect. What has been tucked under the rug. What uh, somebody thought I'm hearing would never come out. It will, it will come out. The truth will, will come out. The truth will prevail, I guess we can say. You see? Whatever's there in the cemetery, whatever ghost that is, it will come out. Here we have strength, guys, and we have a shaman. Strength. This is what it is that you should know. Um, is that this is whoever has gone through this guys you know uh, especially if it's some you know somebody that you love maybe again it's your your child or maybe it's uh, somebody else that you love it can be devastating to to even think you know of what it is that they have been through. I mean, there could even be some guilt there. <sighs> but something it is that you should know, okay, with this strength card is that this is something that uh, has made you stronger, that will make whoever, okay, has been, exper has experienced this, it will make them stronger. And for many of you, we might have a healer here. Absolutely, we might have a healer. For many of you, I'm hearing that what has just happened here was uh, uh, the sh shaman initiation. If you know anything about shamanism, guys, it is believed that uh, a shaman, a real, true shaman, goes through a traumatic traumatic experience in their life. They it, where they feel that uh, they're gonna die. They go through some. They go through an intense trauma unbeatable odds it seems but the whole point of that is to come out of that like the phoenix transformed and that's kind of like what i see here that's an eagle but i'm like seeing it as like the phoenix rising so the eagle is uh some of you the eagle is important the eagle spirit guide which is all about seeing things clearly it's about perception it's about foresight as well knowing okay how things are going to be developing and staying focused always the strength card shaman again look there's a shaman so there is a healer here knowing okay that this is something that uh, you will heal from and transform from this is something that has made you stronger this is something that has made you stronger it's made somebody stronger 
So there's a need to see the positive in this. I'm hearing it's all not negative, okay? Because um, somebody here is re-emerging, re -emerging, it seems like with powerful uh, spiritual abilities for many of you, which could simply just be psychic vision. You know, I, I, one way, guys, to uh, sharpen up your psychic abilities is to be thrown to the wolves to be thrown in a dark situation where there is manipulation, there is deceit and having to blindly work yourself through that and, and you're working yourself through that, through your senses, through uh, your own inner guidance. So that is what it is that we have here. So again, I'm hearing for many of you, this is uh, felt like a test maybe for many of you, but you find yourself in a much, uh, in, a, in a stronger place you're stronger. This has showed you your strength. We'll show somebody their strength. And uh, it uh, will inspire, okay? Will inspire with the strength card. It will inspire and motivate. It will inspire and motivate. Some of you should uh, visit a healer, a shaman specifically. Shamanic journeys. And we have that hair font at the bottom again. What's who's the hair font? The hair font is a spiritual teacher, it's somebody with a lot of experience. So again, for many of you, what you've gained here is uh, experience. You can help others heal from whatever this is. You can um, guide others. I'm hearing through the darkness that you've been through. And uh, you can stand, I'm hearing, as inspiration to others as well. Do you see, to me, that woman there is an inspiration. These other ones here are flocking to her. She's this old, this uh, wise being so that's what's that's what's hidden guys okay what's hidden really is this what's hidden is the the truth will prevail truth will come out foresight look you see they're looking they're looking they're looking at the distance you see how that's foresight it's like seeing something coming that's what it is that you should expect guys be patient Focus on healing. You're getting stronger right now, this very instant, this very moment as I speak. You're regaining your power and your strength. I always say a true healer is someone that heals themselves, uh, helps others heal themselves of what it is that they healed from. That is a real healer. A real healer has been through some tough times, let me tell you, but they've survived. A healer is a survivor. So here we have a survivor, guys. And here we see somebody that uh, is, uh, well, um, seems like a mentor, uh, a guide, a calming uh, presence for others. Okay, so what can you expect in moving forward? I feel like that's something you can expect. What can you expect in moving forward? Perhaps uh, near uh, immediate future. What can you expect? What can you expect? Immediate future. Immediate future. What is going to be unfolding? Let's leave my dear Scorpio with some insight, some foresight into what it is that they can expect to be developing. We have the Ten of Cups. Oh, goodness. And then we have the Empress. Okay, this spinned a whole lot. Okay, Ten of Cups. Look at that, guys. Oh my God, Blue Wells. This is about, I'm hearing connecting through the heart chakra. When I, have you ever listened to the Blue Wells sing, guys? It, it it's like speaks to your heart. It's connected here to the heart chakra, guys. So I'm seeing this Ten of Cups as deep emotional bonds connection. Um, 
deep uh, emotional uh, relationships, guys, and communication I'm hearing through the heart chakra. Like right now, I'm just getting this feeling, guys, of like being next to somebody and you don't have to say anything. It's just like your heart, um, you feel your heart chakra, you feel the warmth and um, it just feels really good. This my heart chakra, it feels really good. I mean, communicating without even having to speak. You're you're just what is it? Uh, it's like a not telepathic communication, but uh, like telepathic communication, but through feeling. <laughs> if that makes any sense. And then like I guess empathy, but not empathy. More than that. Here we have the Empress. What is that? A little hog? Yeah, that's a little. Is it a hog? Is it a hog? There's a rabbit. There's a deer. The empress. Guys, I'm just I'm seeing this empress as just um, an environment that is very supportive. That is uh, where you can thrive. The empress. That's what you can expect. You can expect this could be symbolic of other people. You see, that's like a family of whales, right? They're, they they flock together, don't they? Like the, the whales, they, they, they come in groups. They live in groups, don't they, the whales? The Ten of Cups, guys. I'm seeing this as just happy. You can expect... Happiness, guys. Good times, good memories, fun times. Like these people are having fun. They're having fun. You might go to the beach. Maybe you might not go to the beach. Maybe you'll go well watching. Maybe you won't go well watching, right? But this is all about enjoying time with those that you love, being emotionally fulfilled, being happy. And with the Empress being there, guys, it's like, it's, the perfect energy it is that you need because it is incredibly supportive and is going to help you heal, is going to help you thrive. And that's exactly what it is that we need in this situation. Look at that beautiful environment there. Everything's thriving. The animals, everything is in balance, everything is connected and uh, everything is, I'm hearing in harmony. That's what you can expect. Oh my God, isn't that beautiful, guys? You deserve that. It's a, it's it, this is this is what's next. Fun times, healing, supportive home environment, thriving, progressing, healing, being surrounded by. Uh, I mean, those that love you. There's a lot of spirit animals as well, guys, connecting with the whale, blue whale spirit animal. Look up uh, the uh, the deer, the rabbit, as well as, what is this? This is the, uh, the hog, is it the hog? One more card. This is what you can expect, guys. Beautiful energy. We have the nine of wands. This came out like this, like reversed, slanted. And it's the nine of wands, guys. And here is the nine of wands reversed. Here we have a little kid, right? And they're surrounded there by wolves and he looks to be howling, right? I think they're howling. And here we have a group of hunters so they're being hunted, right? Um, and it's reversed. So for many of you, this nine of wands reverse is representative of the person that we saw from the very beginning, right? That is, be, that is being haunted by these uh, nightmares, by the hag, by then uh, the night hag. And the nine of wands to me reverse uh, represents uh, this person's ease. Because the nine of wands upright is very tense. 
it's traumatizing for sure because you're always watching your back. You're like, ooh, you know, you know, the nine of wands is symbolic of a war that has just uh, stopped. Is that moment where the eye of the storm, maybe we could look at it like that. But the point with the nine of wands is that uh, you feel like you can't let your guard down. Well, with it being reversed, I do see somebody letting their guard down, I, which means what? That means that they could be a lot more open uh, with you. They, they're they going to be less resistant. That as well could create a better, um, you know, improve the relationship, maybe even the communication. Somebody is just dropping their guard, guys. And that is because when you drop your guard, why? Why does that happen? Because you feel safe. So I do see somebody doing that, guys, feeling safe, feeling secure, trusting, trusting enough to let their guard down, I'm hearing. And that right there, guys, is uh, going to be a beautiful sight, okay? You remember that. That's what you can expect, guys. Oh, my goodness, Scorpio. What a reading. I am done. I'm not doing any more readings. Not today. Let's close your reading with a... With a closing message this is the self-love oracle scorpio if you want to book a reading with me you can do so by going to the link down below in the description box it's going to take you to votrevoyagetarot.com where you could book a private reading with me all right let's see scorpio we have these two cards and it says share light share light return to center and we have a butterfly we saw a butterfly you see there's a there's a butterfly right there. And then we have, oh, that's a swan, I think, but it's a bird of some kind. All right, so this says, share your share your trials as well as your triumphs. Your stories benefit you in the telling and others in the hearing. That's that hair font. You see it right here. Share your trials as well as your triumphs. Your stories benefit you in the telling and others in the hearing, spreading the light of transformation. So share your trials and your triumphs, guys. It's it's going to help somebody. It's going to help you in the telling and it's going to help others in the hearing. Look at that. Return to center. Chaotic events do not benefit from panicked reactions. The situation may not need a response from you. Stay calm and centered in your heart. Return to center. Look at that. Chaotic events do not benefit from panic reactions. So I'm hearing there's a need to uh, be aware of your feelings, to have maybe some self-control. But I'm seeing this as just awareness, okay? There's a, a need to have awareness and knowing that, you know, uh, there is a need to stay, I'm hearing, contain and not overreact at times uh, because, you know, you might get angry maybe. Who knows? Stay calm and centered in your heart. So don't don't let anything uh, don't let chaos in anymore. Don't don't let that energy continue to torment you and affect you now. This is a time for peace, maintaining that peace. Okay, well, let's get some more cards. Scorpio, let's get some more. This is the Whispers of Love Oracle. The Whispers of Love Oracle. All right, Scorpio, Scorpio. Closing message for my dear Scorpio. We have this card right here. And it says, honesty is essential. Be a loving person. It is important that we speak truthfully and in a loving manner. Be a loving person. It is important that we speak truthfully and in a, and in a loving manner. So I'm here and be kind. You know how, like right now I'm thinking about a person that is like brutally honest. Well, the truth just comes out like this. No, 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 no. No, it doesn't. The truth doesn't have to hurt. Okay. And here I feel like it's just saying there's a need for, to be gentle. Even when perhaps discussing the truth, which could be sensitive, right? Speak truthfully and in, and in a loving manner. So always I'm hearing be honest. Okay, honesty is essential. Communication is important. And always be honest. Always be honest. And if the, I'm hearing is honesty or if the truth is hard, there's a need to be gentle. Okay, one more card. It says practice compassion. 
Look at that. See things from a different perspective. See things from a different perspective. I'm hearing this experience has affected me in this way. And then I'm hearing think about it like this too. This experience has affected this person in this way. We all experience and react in different ways. There's a need for compassion, which is to me, it's just saying there's a need to be understanding perhaps. And compassionate, yeah, absolutely. Patient. This is the key oracle, closing message for, for my dear Scorpio. Here we go. It says stuck energy, stretch, yoga, Surya yoga is really good, um, breathing exercises, guys, stretch, stretch, stuck energy, alignment. Your body is requiring energy work to get back in alignment by balancing your chakras and clearing your uric field. You have stuck energy that can be caused by holding on to pain and having resistance to let new energy flow in. Get grounded and reconnect to your body once again. So this is all about finding harmony, harmony and balance, guys. Uh, knowing, okay, that uh, there's a need to come into alignment. There is perhaps some emotional um, baggage here, some stuck energies that need a little bit of assistance to, uh, I'm hearing, just come out, okay? So again, the Surya Yoga is really a good exercise. Meditations that help with energy clearing. Steve Noble's YouTube channel, I highly recommend him. He is an incredible light worker that has the gift of healing through his guided meditations. Guys, Steve Noble, he has a YouTube channel. Look it up, guys. Passion ignited desire. Live with passion by stepping into what feeds your soul and gives you joy. When you choose to make room for this in your life, the universe responds by creating opportunities that support your soul, purpose, and passion. This is what I have for you, Scorpio. Thank you so much for allowing me to do this reading for you. As always, truly. It was an honor and my pleasure. You guys take care, okay? Bye-bye.